Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of the channel. Um, so this is the follow-up to the video that just uploaded recently. This is going to be a quick overview on the 380 Gen 9. Again from Hewlett Packard. You can almost say that I'm a fanboy, more or less. Uh, I've taken this one out of the uh, rack. I mean the uh, rat's nest because I will be uh, doing a slight upgrade to this one. I think today or tomorrow, I will be receiving the flex bay. And I thought that while I'm gonna be doing that, I might as well just go on a quick overview and uh, do a small introduction with it the same way I did the uh, 380 Gen 8 as well. So this is the 380 Gen 9. Uh, one of the key differences between this one and the one that I did earlier is that this one's gonna be the large form factor review versus the small form factor review that I did on the uh, Gen 8. Uh, but in terms of consistency of the video, I would like to do my best and hopefully not veer off too much in terms of the differences. And I'm gonna be more or less going over the same pros and cons, same advantages and drawbacks of using a HP and uh, hopefully that could give you a overall direction in uh, in your choice of hardware. So as mentioned just now, this is the large form factor of um, drive bays versus the small form factor. I don't know on top of my head why they're not just using a um, divider chip so that they can segregate it into two 8087 connectors. Um, I think that's probably one of the biggest um, slaps in the face of users because as you can see here, this is not a standard 8087 connector. This is the ugly proprietary white SAS, which I don't know the proper designation for it. However, it doesn't make it any less friendly. Uh, for you to use one of those, I do apologize for hiding uh, my garage. It is a mess, but please bear with me for a second. When I bought this server, it came with a P840. Now, the reason why it did is because it has two white SAS connectors. Now, what you see right here is the onboard connector, which is something similar to the uh, onboard flex LOM, but this is specific for the storage controller. There's a P840 variant, which is called the P840AR, which literally just plugs in over here and it saves you a PCI slot. Again, you have the uh, riser connectors here and here. Slight difference is that these are not full length and these are slightly longer than full length. I'm not entirely sure why they did it that way. Uh, certainly there's a reason for it, but you know, we'll, we'll tackle that just a little bit later. Let's get back into uh, as best as we can in order of this video. One of the most, some of the most notable differences between the DL380 Gen 8 and the DL380 Gen 9 is the supported platform. They both have six cooling fans, uh, but the DL380 Gen 9 has a few major upgrades, notably DDR4 RAM and um, 2011 3 socket CPUs, which are the E5 2600 V3 and V4. Uh, now, there are some rumors, uh, I cannot confirm nor deny item, that apparently you can, you, you can run, sorry, E7 4600 series CPUs in these machines. Again, I cannot confirm nor deny it. Some people have had luck with it, others have not. So please, uh, if you do decide to upgrade it uh, in that direction, do so at your own risk. Uh, moving on to the layout of the motherboard, uh, further down, 
you have two, two instead of one, onboard USBs. And a very nice upgrade is that these USBs are USB 3, as you can see by the blue tongue inside the port itself. Uh, one of the, and one other upgrade that is very nice to have is that the SD slot is a micro SD instead of a full SD. You have a power connector for the, sorry about that. Let me just move that right out of the way. The uh, power slot that you see over here is for the riser, uh, for the uh, rear uh, riser bay, uh, sorry, not riser bay, flex bay which is an optional upgrade on these servers, uh, which basically adds two extra hard drives or two extra hard, light, hard drive slots in this area right here that connect into uh, either one of these ports that are going directly into the SATA or the onboard B140 integrated um, RAID controller. Uh, you have a TPM uh, connector. I believe this is TPM2. It's the uh, 20 minus one pin. So the 19 pin connector and uh, boasting again, the integrated lights out four, which is the exact same one as it was in the, uh, the in the uh, Pro Lion 380 generation uh, eight. The Otero Cyclone four this guy right here, this big boy right here, is your graphics chip. Something to note is that these servers, uh, the uh, dual Xeons that they support, do not have onboard graphics. The graphics itself is powered on by this chip right here. And I believe this is the uh, graphics chip. Otherwise, this would be the uh, networking chip, which feeds the... Uh, four port connector in the back. I have to double check. I believe this is the graphics chip. If not, it's the uh, it's the network chip. Uh, some other notable uh, similarities is that, again, you have onboard SATA and the flex line connector. This is just like the 380 Gen 8. This is not a standard PCI Express slot. So please do not plug any PCI Express devices into it because you will burn both the device and the motherboard. Uh, coming back into the rear port of the server itself, y your mezzanine slot will have uh, either a four, one, four times one gigabit connection or two times 10 gigabit connection. An upgrade to uh, loc uh, to, uh, to local connectivity, which is uh, USB 3, as can be noted by the uh, super speed or the blue tongue of the uh, hardware device itself. And one very hugely notable difference is onboard gig networking. So this and this, you don't have two separate graphics, uh, sorry, not graphics, network cards on it anymore. It is put all together. And then obviously the uh, integrated lights out management port, as well as your uh, VGA out. In my case, uh, in this, machine i have dual 800 um i believe they are gold plus just a second let us verify that real quick oh platinum plus okay never mind then um two 800 watt they can you they they that they, they can run in either balance mode or a and b mode um so that they can have um <clears throat> um Oh, what's it called? Redundancy mode. There we go. So, uh, one thing that I personally really, really like in the uh, Gen 9 versus the Gen 8 is the optional space for the uh, flex bay. This versus uh, replacing the uh, ODD, sorry, not the ODD, uh, the CD-ROM in the front as it was with the uh, Gen 8. I believe is a was a much required change that HP made and I'm very very happy to see it because if you just come with me in my dirty garage and see my rat's nest accessibility for the boot devices 
is amazingly easy. If you need to replace something, you just pop it open without having to worry about the front panel of your um, computer or sorry, of your cage. What I use this guy for, this is my storage server. As I said, the only reason why it's on the uh, pedestal here in the front is because it's getting a slight upgrade. It's gonna be the flex bay that's coming into uh, the first port right here while I'm gonna be saving a little bit of money for the uh, P840AR um, daughter board so that I can properly uh, make use of all the connectivities of the server. And I will be slapping a PFSense scale on this with the 10 gigabit per second uh, flex LOM adapter that's uh, going to be, oof, what's, what's the word, LACP'd into a 20 gigabit connection uh, up and down. In terms of uh, server capabilities, the there are two types of heat sinks. Uh, I currently cannot show you the other heat sink model. It's just basically a slightly taller one um, in, a, in a T variant going down and it has higher thermal capability. That's for all the CPUs that are rated for 120 watts plus. If we have a look at the I don't know if we can see that on the label or not. Probably not. No, no, we cannot. But if you go into the uh, parts list for this server right here, uh, this is the um, heat sink that is rated for 105 watt CPU. So I believe anything up to and including the E5 2660v4. Um, the ones that are the tower shaped a little bit are for the, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, are for the 26, I, I want to say 2670 V4 and above, which is basically everything that's 120 watt TDP per chip and above. Uh, my personal configuration right here is 128 gigs of RAM, which is two, four, six, eight sticks of 16 gigabytes of DDR4 and this one is 2133 uh, the only reason why it's 2133 is because I haven't really had the opportunity to upgrade the uh, the, uh, the the CPUs in here so I am running 2660 V3s in this one so there is no need for me to get the uh, 2400 uh, T RAM modules simply because the CPU cannot utilize it whatsoever. Uh, that pretty much covers it. Uh, I personally believe that the uh, Gen 9s are greatly superior to the uh, Gen 8s. They brought on much needed upgrades uh, to the geography of the chassis which, uh, you know, gave possibility to have the flex bay to, uh, to um, uh, you know, add this little daughter board in, uh, extra power connectors, MSD. Uh, obviously, they did some minor revisions like moving the SATA ports over here. And uh, in terms of the best HP server for home lab use, note that I did say HP, not overall um in terms of hp from the manufacturer of hp um uh, the ones with the um eight bay would probably be hands down the best uh option for a starter server thank you very much for joining me and uh, i will see you in the next one